dated someone who didn't work out. Shit happens. Life goes on. Hello, welcome to Premier Scene. I'm Claire Bueno. As girls will be girls at the premiere of The Powder Room. Mom! It's been forever. What have you been up to in Paris then? I got engaged. <laughs> yeah, it's massive. <laughs> Sam's in a, a lot of conflict, so for you as an actress, was that a very attractive role for you? Do you know what, I think everyone can relate to Sam. She's a great character, she's stuck in a rut. She's um, one of those girls that's been looking on Facebook, seeing all her friends doing so well, and she feels like she's stuck there, no boyfriend, no job. And I think we've all felt like that at different times, you know. And I, I know I even I go on and look and see all my friends have had like six kids and I'm still with my dogs. And, you know, you always kind of are at, you know, an award winning actor. I mean, yeah, I, mean, I love my job, don't get me wrong. But, you know, there's always that thing that you compare kind of each other. And I think at the moment with the social media sites and magazines saying girls should be this and that, it's people can get lost, young girls can get really confused. And so I think it's a really good film for right now about real women and it shows women lay bare, you know, what we're really like. When we're in a ladies' toilet, all girls together, you know, your barriers are down, you cry, you're sick, you call your ex, you know, it all kind of goes off. Everyone becomes a psychiatrist and starts helping each other out, don't they? And it's the first time I've read a film that's really had all that on the page and wasn't this kind of twee glossy kind of Americanized film it's like real raw warts and all real women lay bare and I think young girls will relate to that I hope I hope that a lot of young girls will come along and enjoy it and get a nice message from it because it's got a lot of heart it seems to be a film about acceptance I think it is it's about being true to yourself and being happy in your skin and you don't have to be like everyone else you know because from the outside Sam has these friends you know the girls who work in Paris and a big engagement rings and from afar that looks like something she aspires to be but when you get to know them through the film they're just as unhappy and they've got insecurities like all of us have so it's about just being true to yourself and is loving it, is it. Is it a case as well for you as an actor being able to balance between what is vulnerable because she tells lies in the film and, and so how do you keep the audience on board with out her looking like bad really. Well that's it, I know I did find that when I read it I thought but, but you understand why she says them, they're little white lies that we know we shouldn't tell but she kind of gets stuck in a rut and they kind of pop out because she's trying to fit in and she thinks it's the right thing to do but at the end obviously it all unravels and then you realise that there's no point in telling lies, just be happy in who you are and, and love yourself and you, and I've got all those great friends like Jamie's character who I love, she's pointing at me like I adore her um, and you know that, that end scene where we're all together is just, it made us cry when we watched it the screening so I hope people enjoy it anyway. Do you come here often? I've well, been here once before. We thought it was a bit of a Posh dive. dive. Posh dive. Now, your character's been described as the tart with the heart. Is that how you have the heart? Um, um, okay, she's borderline promiscuous. Yeah, she is. Uh, she's got that to her. I think she's a very inspirational young woman, really. I mean, she's confident. She's a hopeless romantic, you know. Every girl wants to go out and meet the man of their dreams. Um, you know, okay, she gets quite lucky. Um, but she just wants to. She just wants to be swept off her feet, and she she believes in romance. And to be honest, she's the only one in it that I think is honest with herself. Doesn't put herself on a you know a pedestal, and she um you know she genuinely believes she's meeting the man of her dreams. Okay, maybe not behind the bar pulling a white Russian, but you know she um she believes in it. So I, I kind of I kind of love Chanel for that. When you read the the part, you, did was it something that you thought you know what I could have such a lot of fun playing this character? Yeah, I mean, instantly, as soon as I as soon as I read it, um, I met MJ, and me and Sheridan have wanted to work together for a while, and yeah, I just, I loved her. I just thought, you know, I know girls like this, or I know girls like each of, every one of them, and, you know, I I found a massive soft spot for her. I just thought she was great, and she was really funny, and she was really real, and like, you know, although she kind of had this whole persona going on, she. She didn't succumb to like social pressures. Guess what I've just been doing? She probably had the best sex I've ever had. You left like four minutes ago. All right, well, not the absolute best. <laughs> I think the moral of the story is all about acceptance. Is, is that how you saw the um, I, There's definitely a theme of that in it. I think Rachel and I have both always wanted the film to be a celebration of female friendship, but I think. For me, that's the heart of the film, and that's what kind of chokes me up about the story is sort of that uh, that wonderful type of friendship that you get between two girls that you can't replicate and you can't replace if you have it, and just 
learning to value it and love your girlfriend. It's a really nice message. And obviously, the film's called The Powder Room, so a big part of the film is situated in a female toilet. So for you, visually, as a director, how do you make that interesting, really, for audiences? Um, it's certainly difficult when you... Because obviously, when you translate a play to a film, the temptation would be to take something in one location and put it over a number of locations. And for us, we didn't really have the luxury of being able to do that because we were in such a tiny budget. And so it was a challenge, but it was a really fun challenge because it meant that we had to be really ingenious with our production design and we tried to make different spaces within the one room and tried to find opportunities to take you into different realms and like looking at like all out we break every rule of filmmaking in the way this is shot and edited but it was sort of we just wanted to get the maximum amount of variation and life out of what is a four walled room so yeah. and I believe there was a really quick turnaround as well from from production of the film and so for you being a first time feature director was that a massive challenge I think to be honest it was probably quite good that I was a first timer because I think had they he approached, had Damien said to someone that had done it before we're starting script development and pre-production in September and we're going to take it to Cannes in May. I think it would have, but for me, I didn't know any difference. I was like, oh, okay, let's get on with it. Um, so yeah, I think it was probably an advantage that I didn't realise quite how mental our schedule was. How old do I look? 18, definitely. Okay, what do you drink? White wine, spritzer and lemonade. that get you drunk? So my sister drinks and she's drunk like all the time. Your character um, is really where the, the whole story kind of evolves from, isn't it? Is that how you saw her part? Yeah, I mean, I guess I didn't think about it like that, but um, but yeah, like Sam um, and Michelle, I guess, have agreed to meet up. And um, because of the way Michelle is, um, she feels the need to lie, you know, tell a few white lies to impress her, and it all spirals out of control. So, um, so yeah, it's kind of... And is the, the fact that there's a story, like a backstory, really, between it yourselves and, and Sam, that's Sheridan's yeah. character. Um, and did you work with Sheridan on a, a backstory? And um, there was a lot of there was a lot of hanging out between everybody on set. Actually, like I was just saying, like it was such a nice atmosphere. Like all the girls hung out in the green room, like a lot of chatting, a lot of gossiping, a lot of eating, and and um, and everyone was like, all the actresses were like very helpful on set. Do you know what I mean? Like very giving. So. So yeah, and the, the, the part that you're playing, she's sort of very glamorous, and is and and I'm just wondering, with, with, as well with the world of celebrity that you obviously been um, you've been around, yeah. is it do you, have you based your character on anybody in particular, or um, I think there's probably a few people that I based it on in my mind, not not necessarily from like the celebrity kind of like world, but. Um, probably from school, do you know what I mean? Just those kind of people. And everyone has someone in their life that makes you feel terrible and insecure. And even if you were like, you know, dressed really well and you feel at like your best and you meet this person and you, oh, you just, you kind of sink, do you know what I mean? So I kind of based it on her, like, and that's all to do with someone's attitude, I think, and what they're like projecting. So, because she's such a bitch, <laughs> she's like constantly making people feel bad about themselves. But obviously it's because she's really insecure as well, which is the classic bully, I suppose. Like, you were very much the driving force behind the film being made, weren't you? Uh, yes, I guess I was. Not quite the only male in the, in, in the group, but um, I saw the play, uh, Rachel, the screenwriter's play, When Women We, as it was then called, which was a series of vignettes she had created with some of the original cast from the stage show. And it was hilarious, and there was, I was like one of five blokes in the audience, otherwise all women of all ages, all just loving it, sort of laughing nostalgically and sort of, well, whether nostalgically or current, laughing at all these sort of anecdotes and mad characters. And so I just thought if we could, you know, repeat that in film, we'd be on to an exciting thing. So I took the play, Rachel adapted it as a screenplay, and then we got MJ Delaney on board, who had done that wonderful viral that I'd noticed at the time, but only until I saw her short film um, did I then sort of put two and two together. And then she loved it, she was looking for her first movie, and you know, we then got together this formidable cast that, you know, for our size and 
sort of the time we had to shoot it um, is fantastic. And they, you know, they reacted and it related to the the script and the stories and you know all the mad sort of uh, comedy that uh, I guess you women get up to. What's wrong with Paige? It's your spine. What are you doing? Nothing. Just checking on my boobs. She is not fine. This it all sounds like a great story to be a part. Of. I know, quite simple but very effective. Oh, yeah. Was it about the the project when you first read it and thought, you know what, I've just got to be a part of this? Oh, let me think. It's in a ladies' loo. <laughs> Not often you get to do that. You know what I mean? And for me as well, great. I love the character. I love the thought that she's Paige, who I play, is quite straight laced, and then from one decision, it spirals out of control and has this whole different experience. You know. You do have a bit of a mad time, don't you, in this? Yeah. Don't do drugs. Yeah. <laughs> Just one prepare for that then. <laughs> um, YouTube. Really? YouTube. I know. And the thing is, I spent, because I was I was trying to get loads of people to come with me to go to some dirty club and just be like, let's just watch people, because people must do this stuff. Let's just watch people. And I thought, I can't do that. I can't just be all up in everyone. YouTube, strangely, I thought, I'm going to type it in and see what comes up. Everything. Anything you can think of is on there. So, yeah, that was uh, one evening I spent, I don't know, a long evening, just video after video, getting lost in... Anyway, lost in a trance or the drugs. No, no. Exactly. And you're working with a director who's a female. Yeah. With, with the context of the script, do you think it was important that a female took the helm because she gets it? Well, I, I mean, you know, I think, in, um, like, when you look back, you think, oh, maybe that is a good thing. I don't think I ever thought that for a second. You just, it's, you know, I don't pay in mind to if it's a male director or a female director. It's great that it's female, it's great that it's a female that wrote it, but I think there's a lot of us, you know, about. And um, with regards to it being a comedy, yeah. what was it? What was that like for you to perform comedy? Is it, is it easy? Is it, you know, is it all in the timing? Is it trust with your actors? I tell you what was, um, yeah, I've, I, I, it's trial and error for me, I think. As long as I've been, you know, in this and doing acting, I've definitely learned that what makes something funny is actually playing it completely straight. That's it, and that you trust in the comedy comes from the audience that are with you all the way and the one step ahead of you, and that's the comedy. When you first read the script, what was it uh, about it that you connected? A bunch of girls hanging out in a pub toilet. <laughs> Not a pub, a club toilet, it's great. Fantastic, um, and it's a really funny script, and I think the fact that it was a play first was made it stronger almost as well. There's so much history from it and it's so important to Rachel to make it so yeah it was fantastic script, really really funny as well so I was delighted to be involved with it. When we talk about it being funny, obviously comedy, it's all about the timing, it's delivery. So is that difficult to, to, to pull off? Um sometimes I think you have to do like all the work before you get there and really just to relax and just have fun with it. And sometimes it gets a bit nerve wracking and you get a bit ooh but just really to relax on set. And it was quite a relaxed vibe on set. We all had a great time, so it was a great laugh. So, yeah. With your character, what was it about her that when you read her, you just thought, oh my God, I have to have this part? <laughs> she's, um, she's a great girl, like her style all to her own. I, I look quite different on yeah. the film. Um, that nobody been recognizes me, I know, it was great. The first time I've ever had an all over tan, which was, um, quite scary actually not even recognizing yourself in the mirror um, but yeah she's just like a really good time girl what's a good time out lifts the weekend with her girls brilliant yeah <laughs> welcome fake club yes now it's interesting about the, the name of the band because the story is very much about what happens mm. when somebody is fake isn't it really I know. that was a happy accident actually we didn't that wasn't doctor that was just a happy accident <laughs> yeah. so it was another tick for the box so it was good <laughs> Did you actually write the songs for the film, or were they the songs that were already produced? Some of them are our songs that we've been like working on for the past year, so that was good that we got them in the film, kind of thing. So. A couple that we actually wrote for the film as well, because yeah. songs it, like we would never write normally. Yeah, there's like basically, a dance. we had to adopt an alter ego to be able to fulfil <laughs> the role that needed to be played, but um, it was really cool actually. Quite enjoyed it. Got a few simps out in places, didn't we? Stuff like that. Yeah, it was cool. 
So had you seen the script or did you see clips of the film to base your music? No, we, we, saw, read, the we read the script and then we had like, it was an open conversation with us and the director about how we'd slot in and how that was going to work and we sort of, it was, it was a proper collaboration between us and MJ, sort of like what we're going to wear, what we're going to do for this song and that, so it was awesome, it was brilliant. Like we like, we like, we like, do what we like, like we like, we like, do what, do what we like. Oh God. Do what, do what we like.